Well, let me thank you for the opportunity to be here, have an opportunity to share with you. I'm always pleased and delighted to be able to do that. As a matter of fact, I am calling for 10 debates uh, of the candidates in 10 different communities throughout Chicago so that people will get an opportunity to learn and feel as much about the candidates as they possibly can. I, I was very pleased to hear the introduction. Um, some decent good things were said, and I appreciate that very much. Usually if I make a presentation as a politician, if I get a little applause or something at the end of it, I call that charity. It means that the audience is being <laughs> kind. If I get something in the middle of a presentation, then I call that hope. It usually means that the audience is hoping that the second half of it was better than the first half. <laughs> but if it comes before the presentation, then I call that faith. And I'm very serious about the notion of faith because we are living in some of the most difficult and most challenging times that almost any of us have ever experienced. Unless you were around in the 1930s, you have not seen any economic climate as difficult and uncertain as this one is. As a matter of fact, young people are graduating from college. There used to be a time if you graduated from college, you just knew you had a job coming or it was waiting for you. All that you had to do was walk out and get it. Now young people are graduating from college and sometimes spend two, three years before they ever get the opportunity to do whatever it is that they studied or whatever it is that they went to school for. And so the city of Chicago is no different in that respect than many other places throughout the nation, except in some instances it's worse. Uh, we have communities where there is double-digit unemployment. We have communities where schools are underachieving where kids are graduating and still can hardly read and write. Many of our young people are dropping out, so there is a feeling of insecurity and feelings of not being safe. And these are the challenges we face as a city. We also are a city with a tremendous budget deficit, even though we have balanced what we call the budget for next year, any serious observers know that we're going to have a real tough time balancing a budget for 2012. And that's because we've used a lot of one-time revenue generators. That is, we've gone to sources where you could get revenue this year but you can't get revenue next year. And this isn't something that just began to happen. It has been happening prior to now. People are talking about further privatization of our city's assets and resources, such as maybe selling off a mortgage in Midway Airport, which I'm not really in favor of. Uh, I'm not sure that I think privatization is a panacea. I think what we have to do is we have to look seriously at the way in which we live, and I'm talking about the way the city lives. We have to find some efficiencies to cut down on the requirements necessary for money. That is, there are things that we do that we have to figure out a way to do them better and do them more efficiently, and do them without as much cost. There are some things that can be consolidated, but not a lot. We're looking at different ways of collecting garbage, refuse, and we're talking about going to a grid system 
rather than a ward by ward system. And I think the grid system would certainly save us a bit of money. We're also talking about finding management efficiencies in terms of there being mid-level management in some departments and some places that, quite frankly, we could get along without. We're also talking about consolidating some activity. For example, I'm a fan of trying to see whether or not we can't have one election apparatus. And rather than having both the county and the city manage elections when they're taking place at the same time, suppose we just had the county managing elections for the whole county as opposed to just that part of the county outside the city of Chicago. I also have a thought and an idea and a plan that we might be able to merge health services and rather than the city of Chicago providing health services, we may want to shift all of those to either Cook County government or we have a tremendous network of federally qualified community health centers in the city and we could, for all practical purposes, layer that network into being a part of a system where we had sort of a public-private governmental partnership where the city of Chicago's Department of Health would become a real public health department where we were only doing health awareness, health promotion, health education, health prevention, but not engaged in the actual provision of services. Things that I think we absolutely must do. We must revamp public education. We must improve our public school system. As far as I'm concerned, we have to start at the top of it meaning that we really need an elected school board. And while that would take, obviously, some time to put in place, I would hope that at the end of a Danny Davis four-year administration, we would be electing individuals to run our public school system, that we would have put in place an elected school board. Immediately, we need to find a top-flight educator to run our school system, somebody who's an educator and has come up through the ranks, who not only knows management and systems and systems development, but also knows something about teaching, teaching theories and what really works. What does it take to motivate, stimulate, and activate children to learn? We also need to open up our system to the extent that we have serious parental and community involvement in education. I was very disappointed as to how our local school councils have been functioning. I thought when that legislation was passed, oh my God, isn't this just great? <laughs> now we're going to have great involvement of parents and people in the community, in our public schools. Unfortunately, many of the councils became councils of 15, 20 people who come to the meetings. Sometimes there's not even that many. They have difficulty getting a quorum so that they can do business. What I had envisioned was that you'd have four, 500 people coming out to a local school council meeting and engaging people in what was happening at the school, what was the attendance like, uh, what was the environment like, what did we need to do to increase participation in extramural activity, uh, what's our reading scores like, how are they doing, and all of those kinds of things, and oftentimes 
that's not the discussion that goes on. But that's what I think we really need. I happen to believe that the best way to improve education and to get children to learn is to help them believe that learning is going to make all the difference in their lives. So balancing the budget, providing essential services, creating an environment to create jobs and economic development. I happen to believe that green technology, that that the one place where there is a great opportunity is with the creation of, of new kinds of energy. I want to retrofit every public building in the city of Chicago, including the schools, so that we can make use of the energy conservation techniques and approaches that we know work. This will create some jobs, and I think we could even get into some light manufacturing of solar panels and the things that we really need to make this happen. We need to put a lot of focus on community development so that we can reduce violence, fear, and crime. But unless children get the opportunity to be involved and engaged in things with adult supervision, they will find other things to do. I grew up in rural America, very simple kind of people, very simple kind of life. My folks were sharecroppers. And they believed in some basic things. They believed that an idle mind was the devil's workshop. <laughs> People ask me, and I'm done, why do I want to be mayor of the city of Chicago? Why wouldn't I be just as happy not to even get engaged in this activity? Well, when I decided to do what I call public service, I decided that I wanted to try and make the most effective use of myself that I possibly could to help create the kind of world that I wanted to live in. And being an elected official to a real degree is about having influence to help change the direction of things. As mayor, you've got a bigger platform. As mayor, you've got a bully pulpit that's much bigger than what a member of Congress has. And so as mayor, you have an opportunity to influence in perhaps a more significant way the kind of changes and direction you'd like to see. And that's why I run, and that's why I'm a candidate. Thank you very much, and I'd be pleased to... Uh, <laughs>